today's video is know your cost per mile knowing your cost per mile so <clears throat> now i've been doing uh, owner operator going on 18 years now uh, been driving truck steady since uh, pretty steady since 92 Uh, learn how to drive back in 78 yeah that tells on my age but anyway um, I'm 60 years old if you're trying to figure that out but anyway so I was watching mother trucker yesterday and uh, so uh, the guy that was on there was talking about banning um, uh, TQL and uh, I, I personally haven't hauled for TQL for over 10 years. Uh, the company I'm leased on to does not accept loads from TQL. Uh, they have uh, withheld payment or something on one of our loads. And so we don't haul nothing for them, which is, you know, it's no loss because they don't pay anyway. So, and uh, so I haven't hauled for TQL, so that's no loss. Uh, the guy was yesterday was saying they're going to strike P TQL. What does that mean? Well, TQL, Total Quality Logistic, is one of the biggest companies out there as far as brokerage companies. And, uh, you know, they could set a rate by bringing it down or putting it up, and the rest of the, the organization, which is the brokers across the nation, will follow suit. And uh, they have a rate, a fixed rate that they'll they'll all try to follow under. And the bigger companies are the ones that set it, like TQL. And uh, they try to control it, um, which should be fine and dandy if they wasn't trying to rip off every truck driver uh, that they work with. And uh, there are some decent... Uh, uh, brokerage companies out there some decent people just look like in all walks of life you find decent people here and there but for the most part brokerage companies are out there to take every last penny they can out of a truck driver's pocket that's their number one goal their goal isn't to get us the money that we need if if that was the fact we wouldn't have the problems we're having today so I just wanted to kind of give you a rest. Uh, first off, let me bring something up. Many years ago, 17 years ago, I was at the uh, truck stop there, the TA just above uh, Seattle. So a lot of you know where I'm talking about. And we were snowed in, nobody could go anywhere. And so I was there for a day or two. And there was this Swift driver back in the day when they had the KWs and when, uh, they had W900s, and this driver was a uh, least to own driver with one of those W900s, the blue ones. And uh, so we got to talking, and uh, he said he didn't know what his cost per mile was that had come up. And I said, well, how can you operate if you don't know your cost per mile? He said, well, I, I just don't. I, I, he says, all I know is I'm not making any money. I said, well, I said, let's go sit in your truck and I'll show you how it's done. And so let me show you guys how it's done. And I'm not going to be precise because I don't know your numbers. So first off, you need to figure out what kind of miles it is that you run in a year. So once you figure out your miles that you run in a year, Let's say that you run a hundred thousand miles. Okay, so this is where you're going to figure everything. So you know you're going to run a hundred thousand miles per year. Okay, that's uh, what you're going to run. So, so basically, so we'll start off at a hundred thousand miles per year. So that's uh. That's what you'll average, 100,000 miles per year. So the very first thing you want to figure is how many miles you're, you're, you're going to run. And it's say 100,000 miles. Well, your highest expense is going to be keeping that fuel in the truck. 
So you'll take that 100,000 miles a year and you know fuel fluctuates. So let's say uh, it fluctuates from three to five dollars a mile. So let's go to halfway in between, 450 a mile. So that's easy, you can probably do the math in your head. So you go 100,000 miles, Uh, divide that by your miles per hour and our miles per gallon so those average trucks can get to as low as four some can get as high as eight and that's loaded miles so let's say uh, divide that by six so that's uh, 1600 uh, gallons a year that's uh, 1666 16,000 gallons a year okay so and then you multiply that by the cost of fuel 4.50 this would come out to $74,000 a year the 7499 it's basically uh, 75,000 a year so <clears throat> so that's the first thing you want to do so you got you got your miles that's a hundred thousand miles and then your fuel you take your fuel and your miles so that's your biggest ticket is your fuel and so from there you just uh, you break down your numbers um, so like this right here so you'll do um, you'll do your truck payments your yearly maintenance your truck insurance, your fuel, tools, food, if to find out what all that costs you per year. What does that all cost you? Now, so let me not drag this video out for 100 million miles and 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 lose all of you and and so and just jump to the to the end real quick so you'll but basically that's what you want to do. Find out what all your cost is per year. And that's including what you have to have to feed your family and put a roof over their head and your insurance and stuff. So everything you need to know, write down what it is that you need to know in a year, okay? And that's how you wanna start it off, just like I said. How many miles do you plan on running? And you can do an arrest estimate, uh, rest estimation on your fuel. So that every, all this is all rough. And so let me show you, kinda. So, so here I did a, a one earlier, a catastrophic failures. Uh, you, you'll never be able to pay one off within a year because they could be anywhere from $5 to $100,000. But you can get a bank loan and pay them off at $10,000 a year. Yearly maintenance is around $10,000 a year. Truck insurance around $7,000 a year for me. Uh, fuel costs around $80,000 a year. Food let's say 2,400 tools, let's say 5,000 IFTA and road taxes, 1,800 a year. Uh, tolls is a question mark household 48,000 a year. That comes out to 180,000 a year. So now we got a, a round number of what my cost would be is at 180,000 a year. So how would I figure that out? Well, you take, uh, my cost, 180000 a year, and you divide that by 100000 a year, because that's how many miles you're going to run, and that comes out to $1.80 mile. Now, once you come out to whatever it is, your dollar eight, uh, if it's a dollar eighty a mile, now uh, or whatever your cost may be, you might have truck payments, trader payments. I don't; my stuff is paid for. So, so that's what you want to do. You want to find out what your yearly bills are. You total those up. They could be. Uh, 180,000, 280,000, whatever they are. You divide that by the number of miles that you drive in a year. That is all miles. And let me tell you why it's all miles.
because you're paying for the fuel on those deadhead miles as well. So almost every single load has deadhead miles. Sometimes I deadhead a thousand miles, sometimes more, sometimes less. But those, all those miles cost me. So my know, I know that it costs out of 100,000 miles a year, at a, at a $180,000 in cost is what I got to come up with. Comes out to my bottom dollar is $1.80 a mile. So all miles can never go below $1.80 a mile. If I go below $1.80 a mile because I'm deadheading or whatever, then I'm in the red, meaning I'm hauling people's freight for free. If everything that I haul is a do above $1.80 a mile, I'm in the green. I know I'm good to go. I'm not hurting. Everything's getting paid for. Now, my personal cost as an owner-operator, because I don't put in 100,000 miles anymore, I'm, you know, a little slowed down at 60. And uh, my personal cost is 247 a mile. And how did I come up with that? Well, just like this. I know what my miles are and I know what my bills are. Take all your bills and make a yearly average and divide it by the miles that you plan on driving in a year. Some of you can drive 200,000 miles a year or close to it. So, you know, you can come down to a lower dollar per mile. Some of you have a whole lot less bills. Some of you have more. Well, whatever they are, put those bills together for a yearly cost and divide those by the miles that you run in a year and that will give you your cents per mile of what you can run your truck for. Always know your cents per mile because if you don't know and you're driving out there and you're taking and booking loads and you don't know if you're in the red or green, what kind of business is that? Uh, that's kind of embarrassing if somebody says, Hey, what is your uh, rate per mile? Uh, what, do you, what is your bottom dollar? What can you haul the bottom dollar for? So you need to know that because you need to know that before you ever book a load. You need to know that before you start deadheading. You need to know that before you head out the door. Always know your cost per mile. So <clears throat> what would be an example of a catastrophic failure? Uh, blowing a motor. Let's say if you blow up a motor, it can cost you anywhere from twenty to forty thousand dollars. You're not most people don't have twenty to forty thousand dollars, so they'll have to borrow that from the bank. And let's say you're not going to pay back twenty forty thousand dollars in a year, so unless you know something I don't, but so you'll get that in a, like a three year plan, four year plan, five year plan, whatever. But you could uh, guesstimate that you'll need to earn at least ten thousand dollars a year for a catastrophic uh, failure. And you need to have at least a minimum of $10,000 a year from general maintenance, tires, brakes, clutches, you know, filters, oil changes, all that stuff. So know your figures, get your figures figured out, know what your yearly bills are, and take that all the total amount and divide it by the years that you, the miles that you plan on driving in a year, and that will give you your cents per mile of what that truck has to earn in order to pay bills. Okay? Well, Stephen is a very good teacher. And um, like, like he said at the beginning of this video, he was watching um, the channel Mother Trucker. And what caused Stephen to think about this is that he was really surprised, well, not surprised, but he was just like, the, the man that was talking, the guest that was talking on the show was saying that most of us would be surprised to know that there are actually owner operators out there who don't have that knowledge. And it was just like Stephen was saying, what kind of business sense is that? That's not good business sense. And um, I know that Stephen goes through and he um, uh, definitely... When he's looking for a load, vets, that's the word I'm looking for. He he vets potential loads because he knows from the beginning that if they don't pay that certain CPM, then he's not going to take it. Yeah, and, and, and when you get to booking loads, uh, ladies and gentlemen, or accepting loads, 
always know that you have to get your money going out because let's say I take a load to Seattle. Well, you know when you get to Seattle, freight doesn't pay coming back. So you need to get your money going out there. And Florida, talk about Florida. Florida as well. I mean, everybody knows Florida, uh, but the, it's not just Florida. It's anywhere you go. So, uh, so you need to get your money when you're going out because when you're coming back, you're going to fight to get the rates that you need to get back. So you have to figure that before you book a load. Know what you're doing uh, when you uh, book a load. Uh, know where it's going. If you know that you can get a good paying load where you're going, then you can drop your rate down or expect the rate to be lower to get there because you know you don't have to have as much to come down to that bottom line to get back. So I hope you understand that. So as an owner operator, you pay for everything. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to bore you. Have a great day. God bless and Look at my pretty wife. Later.